A while ago I made a video about two trains running back and forth using the Powered Up app and some color sensors. But I made a improved version of the program after placing the trains in my city and building the trains I saw some flaws. One of the flaws was that uh, the trains couldn't run at different speeds and uh, at different directions. One of the trains where the motor faced the other way and uh, one of the trains were, were heavier than the other. So they weren't actually, actually running at the same speed. So I made a program that fixed this. Basically, the new program is made uh, by selecting a, con a controller, not coding, in this uh, when you create a new project. That gives you some, uh, some extra graphical stuff. Let me just try to show the components. It consists of these controls and some coding behind it. These controls here are for train zero or the first train. These controls here are for the second train or train one. This is a start button. And this here is a track section occupied if it's if, if the track section is clear or not. So basically you have a track that goes something like this. So down here it's a green end, blue end, red end and other red. So you can see if it's occupied or not that section of the track. And basically when you start the program you need to select if uh, train 1 should start and then press start. Or if train, sorry train 0, or if tra tra train 1 should start. Or if both trains should start you have to select both of these and press start. And these here control the speed of the trains. And this one here will show the actual speed, what speed the train is running at. And these here will show if which direction. It will show zero if it runs in, uh, if it isn't running, minus 100 in one direction and plus 100 in the other direction. And these one down here will uh, show 33 if uh, it's train uh, zero that has occupied it or 66 if it's train 1 that has occupied, uh, occupied it. But uh, enough talking, let's show how it works. Too fast? Let's take it step by step. Train 0 is in the middle at top red ready to drive to green. And green is clear, so train 0 start running with speed minus 30. Train 1 is at blue, but cannot run until top red is clear. Train 0 is on its way from top red to green. Train 0 arrives at green, so top red is now clear and train 1 starts running at speed plus 50. Train 1 arrives at top red. Bottom red is clear and has been clear all the time. So train 0 starts its journey from green towards bottom red at speed plus 30. Oh, what up? Okay, let's see how it's programmed. These components here are for train 0 and these are for train 1. The numbers the components have is vital for the way the train works, the program works. You can see this one has a 0, it's for train 0. And this one has a 1, it's for train 1. So if you say that x is either 0 for train 0 or x is 1 for train 1, then we take x and plus it with 2 for this component, plus it with 4 for this component, and plus it with 6 for this component, if that makes any sense. And also down here, if a track is clear or not, the numbers are here are vital. So track 8, the next section is track 9, and after that track 10 and track 11, and after 11 we go back to 8, and with some basic math, 
we can easily calculate what the next track section is, is and the track se section before that was. So let's look at the the code behind this. Okay, this is a primary program. Basically, it tells only to start when we press the start button. This one here sets all the track sections to zero. So we start by assuming it they they aren't occupied. And this here is for train zero, and this for train one. So if uh, the button is activated for train zero, we start train zero. Or if the button is activated for train one, we start train one. And we start train zero in one direction, and uh, train one in the other. And train zero starts at speed 30, and the other one starts at speed minus 50. That's minus because the motor is facing the other direction, and uh, 50 because it's a heavier train, so uh, there's two carriages, so it, it takes more power to run it at the same speed. And then we just in set uh, this one here to zero. And finally, we start this sub-program with zero for train zero and one for train one. So we have the sub-program here. The sub-program does something if it detects green, blue or red. In the previous version of the program I used uh, yellow instead of blue. But I had some problems with the yellow tiles. They were sometimes picked up as red tiles. So that's why I used blue instead. But what it basically does is that if it uh, detects green, it calls a subprogram with some parameters. If it detects blue, the same subprogram with some different parameters. If it detects red, it basically calls the same subprogram. But because red can mean two things, either the train going in direction from towards green or towards blue, it, uh, it's different which parameters it, it uses. And this one here sets the speed of the train to what's inside one of the graphical elements. So basically, it, uh, it always calls the same sub-program, but with different parameters. Parameter 1 is always parameter 1 from this sub-program. -sub that contains either a 0 or a 1, depending on if it's train 0 or 1. And uh, the second thing is uh, which uh, of the uh, controls, graphical controls, contain this, uh, this uh, if the track sections, section is busy or not. So for green it's uh, 9, and for blue it's 11, and for, uh, for red it's uh, either 8 or 10. And uh, then it tells w which direction the train sh should run after it leaves this. For green it's uh, plus 100, for uh, blue it's negative 100. And, uh, and for, uh, for the red it depends on the direction the train is already running at. So basically it's, uh, it's just the same direction as, direction as it's already running. And then it tells uh, how long should it minimal wait at this station. And uh, it's two seconds for the ends, so the train doesn't just change uh, direction without stopping in the ends. But uh, in, the, in the middle, in red, it's a zero, so sometimes, sometimes the train doesn't stop at the red station. And uh, down here, it, uh, it tells uh, which speed the train should run at. And it calculates that based on uh, on the graphical elements. So we can see here, as I as I mentioned before, that uh, it takes uh, takes this x value, or oh, one for train one and zero for train zero, and uh, based on that, it finds the correct components. And uh, and then it um, sets the speed of the train to that. So that's basically what this sub function does. The other sub function that this function calls, we can look at that also. It sees if this track section is already occupied. And if it's already occupied, then do nothing because then it's probably the same train, train just receiving the same color again and again.
So that's why we have this check in the beginning. Then, uh, then we try to find uh, based on uh, parameter two. That's uh, that's the element with the uh, with this track section. Based on that, it tries using this uh, basic math with, with uh, the modulation operator to find the section before and the section after. So based on that, it tells that the, the section that the train has just arrived arrived to is uh, occupied. And it uh, sets uh, the value to 33 for the first train and uh, 66 for the second train. And it tells that the section uh, it came from is uh, now uh, now not occupied. And uh, and then it sets the speed of uh, of the train to zero, so it stops the, stops the train, and then it waits a random amount of seconds before it runs the, the train again. And uh, it's between uh, two and uh, six for the for the ends, and between uh, zero and six for the for the red red middle part. And after it uh, it uh, has waited this amount of time. It checks if uh, the next track section is uh, is uh, busy or not, and only if it's clear, it will uh, run the train to uh, to the next section, set the speed of the train, and if it's not clear, it will wait in this loop until the next section is clear. So it can wait longer than this six seconds delay. I hope that this tutorial will be useful for someone who wants to run two trains back and forth like I do with a color sensor. And uh, down, in the, down in the description, I will make uh, some links to screenshots of, uh, of the program, so it will be easier to, to make it yourself. Brickistan.